welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Dan Baker and I'm the Global Reentry Program Director here at the National Peace Corps Association. Uh, we are very lucky today to uh, announce a new emerging partnership with uh, Social uh, Entrepreneur U and the Columbia Business School. And we're here today to talk about the, the uh, uh, synchronous and asynchronous courses that we're offering uh, uh, through through Social Entrepreneur U. Greg Van Kirk is a uh, good friend and and uh, 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 reliable member of the uh, Peace Corps community. Greg, thanks for joining today. We've got a little bit of a slideshow to go through and uh, uh, information, but we would really like to spend a, a good part of the time answering your questions. As a reminder, this session is being recorded. We'll post it on the the global reentry playlist uh, within a couple of days following this this uh, recording, and um, just a note as well, uh, we would prefer um, uh, that you uh, uh, unmute yourself and and turn your video on if you have questions, uh, especially during the Q and A section. But uh, I'll be monitoring the chat and Greg, make sure that uh, any questions that are coming in that way uh, get to you as well. So. Without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Greg Van Kirk. Uh, you can introduce yourself a little bit further, and uh, I think you have uh, uh, some slides that you can share. So yeah. you can go ahead and share your screen. All right. Well, uh, thanks so much, Dan, and uh, thank you uh, all for uh, for coming to have this conversation. Uh, as Dan said, my name is Greg Van Kirk. I'm an RPCV. I was a Peace Corps volunteer in. Guatemala from 01 to 03. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, my experience then and since then and how that relates to this coursework <clears throat> when I dive into some of the components of the course. Uh, but uh, what I'd like to do is uh, just give an overview of the courses that uh, that we're offering, and this is this you know fantastic new partnership with, with National Peace Corps Association and Columbia Business School Venture for All. Uh, who I have, you know, our team has been a partner with for, I want to say, 10 years. Um, I taught there as, in sort of a role as social entrepreneur in residence um, at Columbia at, in, in the undergraduate school uh, for a number of years. And that's how this relationship first started with myself. And then um, certainly over the years with um, a great, um, just sort of great ongoing collaborative relationship with the National Peace Corps Association. So it's great to be launching this together. Uh, with the idea of being, you know, certainly as we're all part of the same community and, and, and share the same, you know, visions and um, core values, I believe, uh, really just the idea is how can I, how can we be offering additional resources and opportunities to our PCVs uh, that um, can add value to you, um, no matter where you are in your career. Uh, no matter you know what field you're focused mm -hmm. on, and um, and hopefully what we you know what we have here can help to accomplish that. So great to be here. Uh, let me walk through a brief presentation. I'm going to give one quick note: is that at some point, probably in about five or ten minutes, I'm going to get up unexpectedly because my 11 year old son is going to be ringing the bell to get into our apartment. Uh, so I'll jump out for about a minute, buzz him in, and then I'll be right back. But let me go ahead and share my screen. I'll try to be as brief as possible. I know you don't want to hear me all the time. I certainly don't want to hear myself the whole time. Uh, and But I do want to lay out some context, describe a few things um, to add some more clarity and context uh, for a conversation moving forward. So let me pull this up. All right. So again, just as a lead in, this is uh, you know, it's a partnership between National Peace Corps Association, um, my organization, uh, Social Entrepreneur U, uh, and uh, Columbia Business School. Uh, and so uh, the whole idea is to be offering these online changemaker courses. We've started with a number of courses, uh, two synchronous, two, excuse me, asynchronous courses, one synchronous course. Um, ideally, we'll all, you know, learn together and co-create together, um, get a better understanding too, moving forward of, um, where some real points of value are so that we can continue to shape these courses um, as we move forward and be offered or being able to offer more and more opportunities, ideally very economical opportunities, 
uh, to our PCBs. So um, first of all, I just wanted to set out, sort of disabuse, I guess, ourselves, or set out one thing that I think is really, really important. Um, you know, I am, as you all, you all are, as, um, you know, I've been a social entrepreneur for the last 20 years. Um, and, and I think, you know, to my mind, I think that there's oftentimes a big misconception, and forgive me if this is something that is um, very clear already, but I think there's a big misconception that when we talk about social entrepreneurship, that uh, people always speak to it in terms of um, creating social impact through some types of income um, generating um, strategy. Um, that it, it's about, you know, applying, using business to create social change. Um, to my mind, that's, that can be true. Um, but I take a much broader view of it. And I, and I think, you know, if you look at <clears throat> social entrepreneurship around the world, uh, I would say that's, um, you know, that's true as well. Um, to me, it's really just about taking an entrepreneurial approach, meaning, you know, we know what successful entrepreneurs what the characteristics are of, say, a successful business entrepreneur, you know, risk-taking, innovation, persistence, grit, you know, all these things, all these things that obviously as, <clears throat> as PCVs, um, you all have had to be and the characteristics you've had to have to be successful in your communities. Um, so it's taking that approach, but instead of measuring success by increased shareholder value or in increased profitability, it's, it's about measuring success by increased social impact. Um, so sure, it could be a business, it can be a social enterprise, it could be a nonprofit, a government institution, education institution, it doesn't matter. Um, and so my overall view and the approach with all of this is that the, the structure of an organization and the strategy that it takes should be dictated by the mission, by, by the needs and the challenges and the opportunities in the, in the community and not vice versa. And so, you know, the way that I really look at it is four core components, um, obviously empathy being the number one component, um, but it's about how do we play a positive role in helping individuals or communities, organizations become empowered. Um, obviously we can't empower other people, but we play a positive role in helping that to happen. Um, it's about systems changing, right? We're looking at systems that uh, don't exist, that are suboptimal or that are broken. Uh, it's about social impact, obviously. And it, it's and that we're trying to design innovations, approaches that can scale. Um, I think there's also a misconception at times that um, when we talk about social entrepreneurship, um, it, that it's about, you know, if you're if you're not gonna you know, if you're not gonna sell a you know a a, a billion solar lamps, then it's not adequate. It's not social entrepreneurship. No, it's 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 can you scale, right? Which, you know, get into in the course is just this continuous process of zooming in and zooming out, right? It has to work for one person, but can it also work for many, right? But if you just try to have it work for many, it might not work for one, I think as we all recognize. So I just want to lay the context there um, that this isn't about business that might be um, the way that we approach it, but uh, certainly isn't the focus of these courses. Um, so there are two asynchronous courses um, that, um, that we're starting off with. One is what I, is social entrepreneurship for professionals. I would call it applied social entrepreneurship for, for, for professionals. Uh, that's about um, taking this approach and using it, you know, whether you work in a nonprofit, whether you're already up and going in, in your organization, whether you're working in the field, uh, you know, whether you're working in, in, um, in a bank, uh, whether you're working for a, a company that's focused on consumer goods, if you're an attorney, it doesn't matter. It's how do we apply these concepts to, 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 to your work as a professional. So very much professional development. The other one being design your social innovation. Um, that can be starting from scratch or, or, you know, continually revisiting what you're already doing and seeing, should I make some pivots or the ways that I can improve or the ways that I can modify what I'm doing. So this isn't just about start, you know, one starting point. Um, the way that I've, we've tried to design this, that it can fit where you fit with you, wherever you are, in whatever stage in your sort of innovation journey that you might have. So those are our two asynchronous courses. Um, from a cost perspective, you know, we've worked really hard to try to make this as accessible as possible, but also give some unique opportunities to get deeper. So all of these courses come with a certificate of completion from Columbia Business School Venture for All. Having said that, um, if 
you want to just take the course and having a certificate is not going to serve you professionally. It's not something that's important to you. That's fine. It's just $35, right? Um, if you do want to get the certificate of completion, you can take it asynchronously and you can just, we can check, I can check off that you've done the, the reflections. Um, and a lot of those reflections will be related to your Peace Corps experience as well. Um, and that's $110. You can get feedback. Hey, have you thought about this or great insights there? This might relate to that. Where I, we provide some feedback on some of your reflections. Um, that's for the Applied Social Entrepreneurship for Professionals course. That's why I have that in red. Um, that as well is for the Design Your Social Innovation. However, with the Design Your Social Innovation course, there are also two additional options. And that's one where you can get feedback on assignments and up to three 45 minute advisory sessions. So you're designing your social innovation. Uh, we'll talk, I can offer coaching and insights um, for three different sessions of which there's that cost to it. Um, and then in addition, there's a, a little bit higher price at $300 where um, you can get coaching sessions, um, but also some advisory sessions after the course um, as you continue to do this. Um, and some introduction to potential, some potential networks and partners and folks who might be in the field um, that you're interested in. So a whole variety, whatever you choose is great. The course is the same. It's just your level, the level of engagement, a level of support and advisory that, that you want. With the live course, it's the same, uh, you know, obviously using the same uh, content of the, um, of the asynchronous designer social innovation course. But this course uh, is over six weeks. We'll meet for four hours a week uh, in, uh, in, in blocks of two hours, twice a week. Uh, that's gonna start uh, the week after next. Uh, I don't have this, we don't have this specific day or specific time because what I wanna do is, as always, try to meet people where they are. And so when people sign up for the course, to take a poll and find out when fits best for everybody and see if I can structure those two hours um, in times that work for as many people as, as possible, right? Um, I don't wanna make it restrictive from the start and somebody says, well, I can't do it on Mondays from two to four. Um, that's fine, let's try to work it out and see what we can do. And I do that we can make that work. Um, with that also comes with all of the advisory and the coaching and these are things that typically I wouldn't offer necessarily for this course, but it's just through NPCA. Uh, the cost of that is $650, um, but also uh, uh, NPCA is super generously going to offer 50% scholarships on that uh, for people who apply for a scholarship. A distinction between, besides the content is obviously when we're doing this live, um, I'll be um, teaching. We'll also be working in breakout groups. There will be times when we work on things together, uh, on a certain concept together. Uh, there will be times when you work individually, uh, but we'll, uh, it's experience as experiential as possible. Um, nobody wants to hear, you know, a lecture uh, for the whole time. So it's really about, you know, presenting some themes, diving into some some exercises, coming back, doing a share back, providing some insights. Um, I really take a, a facilitated approach and and a firm believer in in you know all all teach all learn type approach to this. So. Um, the difference obviously in the live is besides it just being live, um, the way that we go, you know, go about doing it, the way that we, we learn together, um, and, and obviously can be a little bit more specific for what you're doing. So, so that's the distinction there. Um, I'm just going to double check on. And Greg, I, while you're double checking, I'll just time chime in. This is Dan from NPCA. And I just, um, this is not something that NPCA usually does or, or supports, uh, programs like this or, or certainly very rare for us to offer a, a scholarship opportunity, but that's how much, uh, how strongly we feel uh, about this program. And we really feel strongly as, as part of our, uh, our third pillar of NPCA of, of uh, increasing RPCE's social impact uh, after their service, that this is a course that will, will uh, increase your ability to do so. And uh, in, the, in the long run, really uh, pay dividends. Uh, so. It's an investment that we are uh, excited and very willing to, to make and uh, probably will not be a long-term investment uh, for this initial cohort. Uh, we'll we'll uh, be looking to, to uh, uh, 
uh, see if, how many scholarships we can grant. Uh, but uh, look forward to your applications. Back to you. Thanks, Dan. Um, yeah, with regards to uh, applications, um, one of the things is if you go on uh, Social Entrepreneur and you, you and you go on the website, we'll make sure to share that with everybody after this. If you haven't, uh, you'll see a place to request additional information. Um, and if you uh, if you go and request additional information, that's where I'll send you the syllabus. Um, also, you have any qu any other questions or comments, and then an application form uh, for moving forward with this. Okay, um, I'm just going to pause for one quick second. It's just my son, as I had said I was going to have to do. So hold on a moment. Uh, so. You know, moving on, I thought I'd just highlight a few of the components. And, I, and again, I'll I can send all of this in more detailed information, or please ask more detailed questions. Hold on a moment. All right. Um, my son's bringing a friend home. All right, and they have some chicken. These are important facts. All right, so, uh, so some of the highlighted components I want to run through quickly. And what I think is, is ideally somewhat distinctive um, is one is, as I'll dive into is really one of, this is, you know, I'm an educator, this is about education, but you know, we're all practitioners and really want to take a practitioner's approach. So <clears throat> within this, I provide a lot of insights from real world practical experience, right? Uh, I don't think any of us are really interested in, in a big theoretical conversation or about, but, but it's about the concepts and about, about, you know, concrete seeing them in action. <clears throat> and so there's that component as well. One of the, um, Social innovations that I really, it's, you know, we certainly and the folks in the field who, you know, in communities who really came up with all the great ideas, but, um, but one of the sort of the signature innovations over the years has been something called the micro consignment model um, that, um, that I had in our team it has scaled globally. So I use insights from that model all along, again, to make it practical um, and so that we can have conversations. So, you know, with those first two things, it's really taking you know, my experiences, our experiences from the field, from doing this for 20 years, uh, from falling on our faces and figuring stuff out um, and trying to help to, you know, to, to guide this as a part, as, as opposed to just, you know, very dry text. As well, I'll talk about a little bit about innovation trim tabs and some of the strategic and tactical insights. These are patterns of innovation. Um, we use many cases, which I want to talk about. I'll jump right into, I'll jump into the design process, change making frameworks and then talk about how I use some analogies from pop culture, science, the arts, again, to make it interesting. And, and I think we all understand the power of analogy. So first of all, just insights from real world practical experience. I don't want to talk about myself. I won't get into this too much, but um, important, I think, just for context. As I said, I, you know, so I was a PCV in Guatemala, 01 to 03. Um, when I was there, I worked in microfinance. I, I worked um, as, helping to start one of the, the first internet centers in rural Guatemala. Then I started my own, I started on my own things about six months in. Fortunately, the Peace Corps let me do this because I had a bit of money saved up. I worked in investment banking before that. So I started a, <clears throat> a restaurant, uh, an artisan store, uh, trekking business, uh, youth hostel. Um, uh, from there, an, an education center. Um, sort of a rabbit project that didn't work out too well because the rabbits decided not to reproduce, but, um, but a lot of, a variety of different things. And then this micro consignment model, which is about empowering, helping to empower first time women entrepreneurs to deliver technologies over the quote unquote last mile. So eyeglasses, water filters, solar lamps, cook stoves, all of that. After I finished with that, I, I worked as a as a consultant as a part as part of our own as just um, apart from our own work in I don't know 20, 25 different countries. Um, you know, we're designing uh, mostly around strategy and design of of development projects and evaluation as well. So, you know, worked in Serbia on a greenhouse project in Bosnia Herzegovina on um, entrepreneur designing an entrepreneurship project. Uh, in uh, Senegal, in microfinance, um, um, in, in Egypt, uh, working with garment workers, in uh, Suriname, uh, designing, um, uh, designing a micro-franchising project, um, 
it, just a lot of different things. So I've uh, worked consulted, as you can see, consulted with a lot of different organizations, worked in a lot of different places, worked on a lot of different things. And the point being is, you know, how do I bring that into this coursework? And, and that's really key. And what are the insights and lessons learned and the patterns over time that, that I've seen from there? Uh, and fortunately, I've been able to be inspired through networks like Ashoka or the World Economic Forum and such and see other people who are doing stuff that just blows me away and, and learning from them. Um, as I said, insights from the micro consignment model, I'll bring in analogies and some insights we've learned along the way there um, through doing that in a number of different countries around the world and, and doing our best to help, help folks get access to things and, uh, that they need in communities and economic opportunities. Um, so I wanna make sure that I weave that through. So innovation trim tabs, briefly, that is, um, a trim tab is something, if you all know Buckminster Fuller, um, and he was like an, an inventor and a designer, and he had this, he came up with this concept of the trim tab, and, and I've sort of adopted that and, and used that in a different way. And essentially a trim tab, um, without getting too deep into it, is if you think about a system as a ship or, or an aircraft, right? Um, then you know if you look at a, a ship or an aircraft and you want to turn it right if you want to change the system metaphorically speaking um it's really really hard it's this massive thing just as systems are massive things um, but if you have a rudder it makes it a little bit easier to turn it but it still takes too much energy to turn it but within that rudder there's another little rudder that's called a trim tab um, and when you turn the little rudder it turns the big rudder and it turns the ship or the aircraft and <clears throat> point being that there are these catalytic trim tabs that when you apply them strategically or tactically that can help to create change with the least energy possible and so one of the things that we dive into i dive into the course is looking at what are those trim tabs that i have discovered over the years those patterns for creating strategic and tactical change and sharing those uh, one of the ways that I share them is obviously to talk through what they are, <clears throat> but as well, I've curated, been through thousands of stories from taking an asset frame of things that are working around the world, um, and, and then provide little mini cases that you can see that touch on all the SDGs globally, so that, that apply those that, are, that prove the application or show the ap application of those trim tabs. So for example, if the trim tab is to repurpose, redirect, or to reimagine what you're doing, I have examples here of, you know, with refugee children in, in Jordan and Syria, uh, how Frisbee is being repurposed in, in, um, to work with between Palestinians and Israelis or entrepreneurship, right? So I want to provide all these real world inspiring cases that you can learn from that other people are doing so that you can apply it to your own work, whether it's in the applied or in the design phase. Um, and then there's a format that I provide a way to reflect upon this uh, and a way to um, consider how you can apply it to your own work. Um, if it's the applied professional social, entre social entrepreneurship for professionals course, or how can you apply it to your design? Um, Dan, I don't know if you have anything you want to add really briefly. I'm just going to run to get the door and then I'll be right back. No, thanks. Uh, and uh, thanks for everyone uh, for, for hanging in here. We'll get to your questions in a minute and just want to encourage you if you do have uh, questions as we go along to type them into the chat and uh, we'll uh, ask you to unmute or put yourself on screen at the end. All right. Um, thank you. Apologies again. So uh, in terms of the design process, and we talk about just diving a little bit more into the design, if you're, if you're interested in the design or social innovation, uh, I try to just take a very modular approach. Uh, first, starting off with what's your hypothesis or your approach. That can be what you're taking now or what you think you're going to take. And then working through the definition, you know, defining about yourself, the constituents, the diagnostic process, right? Think of this very much as design thinking, but really combining design thinking and systems thinking, uh, coming up with your design and then presenting it. But throughout understanding this is an iterative process, and although it's linear, continually reflecting and recalibrating. So continually taking two steps forward, one step back is what I proposed, what I thought still gonna work now that I've learned something new. And 
going through these, periodically going through these innovation trim tabs to be thinking all along the way, how can I apply these strategies to my design um, that have worked in other places and other instances that might work for me. Um, so I won't dive in, but it's really to help you answer all of these different questions. Uh, and the way that we do that is through what I call change making frameworks. And so um, some very, you know, exercises, things that you all have used in the past, I'm sure such as, you know, empathy maps or personas, um, but, you know, getting into systems thinking, journey maps, so I have about 35 of these different exercises that you can use yourself with your team, with the folks that you're working with, provide it to folks that you're working with, so that you can get to the place where you can answer all these critical questions in the design process. Um, and then the last part is, uh, you know, want it to be something that's, that's interesting. And so, as I said, I, you know, I'll definitely weave in analogies from pop culture and science and the arts and, um, and, you know, so if anybody's ever seen the movie Apollo 13, right, we're talking about repurposing. There's the time when they got to figure out how to make oxygen from like five from duct tape and, and pencils and such. So, you know, how does that relate to what we're doing? Um, you know, looking at science and how different ecosystems work. We talk about how to build a mutually symbiotic ecosystem. Uh, dive in a little bit about uh, Finding Nemo there. Um, and then as well, you'll see just a diner menu here is, um, you know, one of the key things too, is I think we all recognize is that, um, you know, behavioral economics, um, social psychology, neuroscience, you know, all of these are really, really critical to understanding how to help effectuate, influence positive change. Uh, and so uh, I weave that through all of this. And I just said this diner menu because it's all about, um, you know, choice overload, right? And, you know, you look at a menu like this and you get paralyzed and you don't know what to choose. Um, and, um, and so you don't choose anything or you do choose something and then you have regret, right? Um, but thinking about, you know, what are all of these different, what are all these different sort of irrationalities or, you know, uh, that we have, um, and instead of fighting against them, how do we work with them and how do we incorporate them in, in our work or in our design? Um, so that is it. I'm sticking with my Guatemalan experience, you know, preguntas, dudas, or quejas. So if anybody has any questions, doubts, or complaints, uh, please, uh, please feel free to share them now. But uh, thank you for the interruptions and, and sorry for racing through it quickly. Again, I can provide, you know, provide all this information and more uh, as we move forward and certainly if you request it. But uh, really, really looking forward to, to working together and especially working together with our PCBs. It should be a lot of fun. Greg, that was great. And Greg has just been a, a real pleasure to work with throughout this process of, of creating a relationship. Uh, you have other irons in the fire as well. And we're not even going to get into Greg's so virtual show, social entrepreneur core, uh, another uh, endeavor that we're looking at uh, collaborating on together. But, um, at this point, you know, we'd, we'd love for you to uh, answer any, uh, ask any questions uh, you might have. Like, like I said, please feel free to unmute yourself and um, turn your video on if you like and ask away, fire away. Sure, I have a few questions. I hope none of them sound too ignorant about the course. Um, so will the cohort be all return Peace Corps volunteers? Yes. Awesome. Number one, good answer. Um, and how big are you expecting the cohort to be? So we need to get to about a, a minimum of 15 to really make this work, but, um, in, but uh, with a maximum of 30. Uh, so want to be able to bring, you know, really, um, have breakout rooms and, and have people work together in teams um, as we do this and be able to, to learn from each other. I've found that, you know, more than 30 and something like this can be too much. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so you lose some of the empathy, the, you know, the intimacy and sense of community. So 15 to 30. And I know you said that they'll be voting on, people will be voting on times for the course. Do you think it would be feasible for somebody in a different time zone to take part? Yeah, yeah, you're right because you're you're a little you're later than us, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm so, six hours ahead. Of Eastern I, I think I think we're probably going to have a, a a number of different time zones. Okay, um, so you so, think it will be possible for that? 
Excuse I can me? stay up to like I can stay up till three a.m. Maybe like once a week, but twice. A week. <laughs> All right, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to make it work for for as many people as possible, right? And um, and uh, you, you know who knows worst case if we end up having you know a lot of people at one time and a lot of people at another time. You know if that's a good problem to have, then you even break it up into two or something. But uh, but yeah, I'll try I'll try to accommodate you. And there's okay, always cool. the, the asynchronous option there too. Yeah. yeah, I know, but that live one sounds like it's where it's at, doesn't it? Um, and then one last question for you, Dan. Out of the cohort of maybe 15 to 30, um, how many scholarships will the National Peace Corps Association be offering? You said maybe that. Uh, it's, it's a good question. We haven't, uh, to be completely uh, honest, we haven't quite figured out what our, our budget is for this. Um, uh, Conceivably, all 15, and we will look at it uh, through a little bit of a needs based lens as well. Um, it, uh, if, if someone has been out of Peace Corps for a long time and has a career behind them, then maybe right. uh, would not be as, uh, as eligible as others, or might also look at a sliding scale of uh, how much uh, uh, with not everybody getting the full 50%. Okay, cool. All right, well, those are all my questions. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Mary. Greg, could you say what the, the next step was? I'm sorry if I missed it. Uh, as for, for people, if, if they are interested. Uh, yeah, so next step is uh, we'll make sure that everyone here has uh, a link to the, uh, the request for more information. Within that, there's just radio buttons, and you can say I'm interested in more information about all three of the courses or just one of the courses. Uh, there's also, you know, question place where you can just put in some questions or comments like Mary, you would have asked just now, right? Um, and so then once you've sent that in, um, then I will get back to you ASAP to be able to provide you with more information about the syllabus and the questions that you might have. Um, as well, when I send that, I'll send the application um, so that then you can apply, uh, and it'll, it'll just, we're just handle it as, as first come first serve. Or is it, is it a rigorous application process either for the course or for the scholarship? Should we set out a decent chunk of time to fill it out? No, no. Um, I, Dan, you can speak to the scholarship. I think the answer for that is probably no. Um, certainly for the course, I mean, you're our PCVs. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's just, you know, do, will you be able to, you know, will you be able to, we're going to figure out the times, will you be able to dedicate the time? Um, you know, I, I, the application for me and application has always been more about are our expectations in line, right? I mean, I don't want you to be applying to this, spending your resources, your time, your money, um, if this, if our expectations are, are different. Um, so it's more about learning, less about applying. And I, I think the, the format is basically going to be a Google form or something similar. Yeah. So don't, not a lot of time invested. No, don't worry. You're not, no, no all nighters going on here. Yeah. Greg, what would you say is, is kind of the ideal profile of someone who would benefit from this course? And uh, it's okay if you, uh, if it's not very specific, right? I think there's, um, looking at the, just the audience here, there's some people with uh, significant career experience and some look like more uh, uh, fresh out of, even evacuated, uh, recently evacuated uh, RPCVs. So, uh, yeah. What's the sweet spot? Um, you know, I'm, I'm, as I sort of alluded to, I, I, I believe, you know, I'm, a, I'm sort of a, a believer that, you know, when you try to design for everybody, oftentimes you design for nobody. Um, but I'm going to break my own rule here a bit. I, I think it's not, I mean, I think ideally the content, um, the approach, um, can meet you where you are if you're in a whole variety of different places. Um, uh, but, um, I, I think it comes down to not necessarily the, like the what of what you do or the where of where you are. Uh, but I think it's just more about, you know, do you have a, you know, do you have a real curiosity? Um, do you, you know, are you, do you want to look at things through both the design and a systems perspective? Um, you know, do you want to, 
you know, do you want to learn from, you know, you're interested in learning from innovations from all around the world, from all different topics, right? I mean, maybe somebody's more interested in, well, I work in, for example, let's say I work in microfinance, right? And I really just want to focus on the microfinance part. Um, that's not the approach that I take. Um, I very much believe that, um, you know, just I'm talking about Apollo 13 or Finding Nemo or New Jersey diner menus, right? Um, I think it's sort of like you see insights everywhere and patterns everywhere. And so I think if you're interested in sort of opening, opening that up and looking at different places and thinking about how I can apply that to what I do and what I'm interested in, um, then I think it's great. But if you're looking for really technical content, um, then this, this isn't, it's probably not the appropriate course. And I think from, from NPCA's side, we're, we're really interested in our PCVs who, who have a bit of a, a, a fire in the belly, who, who have some, some ideas of uh, programs or um, uh, communities that they're really looking to serve. And like I say, we, we view this as an investment in, in uh, social impact uh, within our community. Anyone Other else? Questions? I am a former Peace Corps trainer, and I am very comfortable with awkward silence. So I, I'm okay with waiting the, for someone to gather the courage to unmute. And if you don't have questions, that's totally cool. Yeah, I think going back to Peace Corps experience as well. Oh, do we see is uh -huh. Shannon? Do you have something? Yeah, yeah please. Hey so, there. I'm curious. Um, I have a master's degree in community and social change. And so some of this, what I was seeing in your slides, I'm a little familiar with already, although of course I can always learn more. We have, I have been working with some people already and we have a very specific idea in mind for what we want to do. And we're just kind of stuck right now with getting started. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious if you think that this would be helpful as far as just getting a business going, a social impact venture going, um, would this be useful for us? Uh, I believe so. You know, one of the things that um, we could do is actually is if you shoot me, if you want to shoot me an email, Shannon, and I, I, you probably, we can, we can hop on and have like a 15 or 20 minute conversation. And, uh, and I'm happy to just like listen and ask some questions and then um, give you the, you know, give you my honest thoughts of whether or not this is something that's obviously worth your investment or not. I mean, okay. um, I believe it is, but, uh, but let me, let me learn more so that I can uh, make sure I don't, uh, offer an, an uninformed or biased opinion. Sure, okay, thank you. Thank you. So my email, if you just wanna email me, by the way, I'll just put it in the chat, is just greg uh, at socialentrepreneuru.com. Greg, can you uh, briefly speak to the, what, what is the affiliation between Social Entrepreneur U and Columbia Business School? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's both a, a personal professional as well as, a, you know, institutional. So the way that this started was, um, as I said way back when, was um, I was actually on a panel. I was doing some work with Columbia, um, the undergraduate programs. They asked me to be on a panel to talk about social entrepreneurship. And at the same time, there was um, a dean of the engineering school who was on that panel. Uh, and that was uh, Jack McGordy. Um, and so Jack and I just hit it off and then he asked me to come and uh, work with him at the engineering school. Um, so I did that for a, a number of years, um, teaching social entrepreneurship innovation, like with mostly with sort of with the, with the engineers and through that lens. Um, and so Jack and I were colleagues and, and good friends. And then he left and he went to the business school uh, and started up this, this um, venture within the business school called Venture for All, which was about how to take the entrepreneurship and innovation courses that they have and help to get them out to the world outside of sort of the walls of Columbia Business School, but also to high school students and people in different countries. And so they, they taught this entrepreneurship course and in innovation in Dubai and India and, and continue to do that. And I actually, I also teach entrepreneurship um, with them. Um, but um, we've always talked about 
um, that, you know, I should sort of have all of my social entrepreneurship curriculum and all that and weave that into what they're offering. And so that's that partnership. It's, it comes from us personally and professionally and then institutionally working together uh, where, you know, I'm sort of the, the lead uh, in terms of um, designing and teaching social entrepreneurship and innovation courses. I'm going to um, ask for one more time for any questions, um, feedback also. I, we would love to hear from you if, uh, if this is something other than what you were hoping to get out of it, then maybe we can uh, uh, look at uh, other opportunities uh, with, with Greg or with other partners that will meet your needs. So any other questions before we uh, sign off here? And reach out as well if I can be supportive in other ways. Yeah, I'm happy to do so. First and foremost, this is a um, this is an awesome community, and I respect that hell out of what you all do. So, all right. Well, thank you all. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, everybody at NPCA for the partnership and collaboration. Uh, you all are awesome and really look forward to doing this together. And uh, this one last request is, uh, is if you know somebody who might be interested, please help us spread the word because uh, with these new initiatives, it is sometimes hard to, to reach those uh, who might be interested. I know that uh, the RPCV community, especially recent RPCVs, are feeling a little oversaturated with uh, information and opportunities these days. So please help us get the word out. Yeah, please do. Thank you. Dan, there's a lot of, uh, I guess, unofficial Instagram pages on Peace Corps. I run yeah, one called yeah. Artists of Peace Corps. Um, it's just a submissions-based page with, like, art that people created during service. Uh, maybe it's looking out on maybe reaching out to some of those pages to advertise programs like this. I think they have a pretty huge following. You are absolutely right. And uh, I don't know if that's helpful, just an idea. We're, we're pretty good uh, on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn, but uh, Instagram is one of our weak points. So we'll take you up on that. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a ton of people already doing it. I can shoot you an email too. I'm happy to share it on my page. They're, they're all unofficial. They're just, uh, I don't know, there's like beards of Peace Corps, people that grew beards during their service. So <laughs> big followings. <laughs> well, I could have been in that group. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think they take uh, after submissions, for example. You know, this was my beard during service. Yeah, I need that because if I grow a beard now, I 